Hello, my name is Xuanan Xu. I'm a postgraduate student from Speech Lab, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. I'm presenting our paper on a CRNN GRU based reinforcement learning approach to audio captioning. This is a joint work with Henrich Dinko, Meng Yue Wu, and Kai Yu. At a high level, we are trying to address the problem of automated audio captioning. First, let me briefly introduce this new task. This is a new task in the field of audio signal processing and understanding. A general audio is taken as the input, and the output is a natural language description of this audio. For example, an annoying fly is buzzing loudly and consistently. Although this is also audio to text, like another task, automatic speech recognition, there are clear discrepancies between these two tasks. The aim of automated audio captioning is the summarization of the audio content, but not transcribing the speech content. Many audios do not even contain any speech content in it. Like the example above, there's only a, maybe an insect, but not any people. The focus of the automated audio captioning is the audio events or the acoustic scene. From these aspects, the output is the natural language form of sound event detection and acoustic scene classification outputs. It needs to use a single sentence to describe what the sound events or the acoustic scene are in this audio. Due to the freedom of natural language, an audio input may have several references according to different people, just like other natural language generation tasks, such as uh, machine translation or image captioning. From our points of view, problems in audio captioning lie in two aspects. First, we are exploring for better model architectures. Popular audio captioning methods based on neural networks is the encoder-decoder approach. This requires both an effective audio encoder and an effective text decoder. Therefore, searching for an appropriate architecture is an important problem. In this paper, we propose convolution recurrent neural network, in other words, CRNN, as the audio encoder. Another problem, exposure bias and objective mismatch is also a common problem in many natural language generation tasks. It means the mismatch between training and the evaluation process. During training, ground truth is available and fed to the decoder at each time step to predict the next word, while during evaluation, the decoder can only predict the next word according to the previous prediction. This training method is called teacher forcing, just like the model is trained with a teacher instruction. While during, train, uh, during evaluation, the teacher is not available. This leads to error accumulation. And then the training evaluation mismatch also exists in objective. Automatic scores such as blue, rouge, meter, cider, and spice are used for evaluation. But during training, they cannot be calculated directly from output probabilities. So they cannot be optimized via normal backpropagation in neural network training. Previous work on reinforcement learning in natural language generation directly optimizes the open automatic scores. It treats the network as the agent, sampling a word from output probability as the action, and the automatic score as the reward. Therefore, training and evaluation are conducted in a similar manner. Policy gradient is used to estimate the gradient to network parameters based on the reward. As the equation shows, the loss is defined as the negative expected reward of the sample sentences. The gradient to the network parameters theta is defined as the negative uh, is the gradient to the log probabilities times the negative reward. Since the reward is based on sampled sentences, it has high variance, so many studies focus on subtracting 
a baseline to reduce the high variance. An advanced method called self-critical sequence training or SCST uses the reward of greedy searched sentences as a baseline, just as the uh, R W1 hat, W2 hat to WT hat, and uh, the W1 hat, W2 hat to WT hat is just the greedy searched word of every time step. SCST has achieved great performance in image captioning, so we adopt it here to partly circumvent exposure bias and objective mismatch problem. Therefore, in this paper, our main contribution is twofold. We propose a CRNGRU architecture for audio captioning, and we explore using reinforcement learning, or especially SCST, in audio captioning. This is our proposed CRNNGRU model architecture. CRNN is a common architecture in sound event detection task. It consists of five convolution layers followed by a bidirectional GRU here. Convolution neural networks or CNNs are summarized into three blocks. Each convolution block contains an initial 2D batch normalization layer a 2D convolution layer and a leaky ReLU activation function set uh, with the alpha set as 0.1. After each block, there is an L4 pooling layer. CNN layers are expected to extract general audio tagging information, while the bidirectional GRU is added to enhance the model's ability to localize sound events. Finally, we use a global average pooling layer, or GAP here, to remove the time variability. The input to the system is a log mail spectrogram, X, with 64 mail bands. After the CRN encoder, X is transformed into a 256 dimensional vector representation, V, which is fed to the GRU decoder, which is a unidirectional one-layer GRU to predict the caption output. The decoder is just a standard uh, GRU decoder, which takes as the previous word embedding as the input and outputs the, out the word probability of this time step. The whole model is trained end-to-end -end according to the loss between the predicted sentence and ground truth caption. According to different training method, the loss may be a cross entropy loss or CIDR loss. This is just our encoder decoder scheme. Our training is two stage. In the first stage, we train the model using the standard cross entropy loss. Then we initialize the model with the cross entropy trained parameters and use SCST. Following previous work in image captioning, in SCST we use CIDR reward because it is reported that CIDR is a good optimization objective which can also enhance other metrics. Since SCST uses the sample sentence for optimization, we need a relative reasonable model for initialization. Otherwise, the reward is always very low, so we adopt such a two-stage training approach. In the challenge, we submit four models. The first is the base cross-entropy trained model, named CRNB. The second model initializes the word embedding layer by word to vec trained on the reference cops. We name it CRNW for word to vec The third is the ensemble of the previous two models, while the last is the model initialized with CRNW and further trained by SCST named CRNR, where R stands for reinforcement learning. Here are our experimental settings. We split the training, the development set into a training and a validation subset. The, valid, the split is in a ratio of 9 over 1. We optimize the model using Adam algorithm and the batch size of 32. The training epoch and the learning rate during the two stages are listed here. 
During self-critical sequence training, it deserves to mention that the learning rate is smaller than cross-entropy training since it is actually a fine-tuned process. The results based on the automatic metrics are listed in this table. By utilizing a CNN audio encoder, our model outperforms the baseline method. Initializing word embeddings by word to back does not seem to make a difference. However, non-trivial improvements can be observed from the ensemble of the first two models. Finally, significant improvements can be observed by using SCST. After the challenge, we add SpecHawk data augmentation method and add the SCST training epochs to 200 and we achieve a performance very close to the second place of the challenge. Compared with other challenge submissions, our model is quite lightweighted since the CRN encoder is a rather small model. For the whole encoder decoder model, there are only 5 million parameters in total. We do not require any labels other than captions, such as metadata. We also observe that the compared with other scores, further score of our model is relatively low. Maybe this is caused by the training evaluation mismatch. Cider is calculated by comparing the similarities of Ngram's TF-IDF representations. Well, TF-IDF is just a, a word representation using Ngram's, uh, using the, the statistics of Ngram's. The IDF is calculated based on the whole reference cost. However, during training, we only calculate CIDR in the mini-batch, so there must be some error between the estimated IDF and the real IDF. Also, we observe that SCST models tend to output generic and repetitive sentences, though high scores can be achieved. Here is an example. As we can hear, the main part of this audio is a machine running. Although very difficult to distinguish, uh, there are still some men talking very slightly in the background. The sound events described in the model prediction are actually correct according to the audio content. However, human references are very diversified in the description, such as puzzling or vibration, well, machine prediction only uses a general expression, running. Some annotators use tractor or lawn mower, but the prediction uses the most general phrase, a machine. In conclusion, in this paper, we propose CRNN for audio encoder and try to address exposure bias and objective mismatch problem in automated audio captioning by SCST. Our proposed CRN encoder largely improves the audio captioning performance, while SCST further boosts the performance significantly. However, our pre preliminary analysis reveals that machine-generated sentences are gener uh, generic and lacking in details compared with human references. And our code is now fully available on GitHub. Thank you for your interest in our work.